Welcome to Soldier Pond in the town of Wallagrass, Maine. The town is situated along both sides of the Fish River in northern Maine and has a population of 519 people. The town has an economic base rooted in farming and forestry. Because of its strategic and picturesque location, the town also provides recreational opportunities, especially with fishing, snowmobiling, and ADVs. The residents of the town also have a long history of proud military service. Recently, the town of Wallagrass has collaborated with the adjoining towns of New Canada and Cross Lake to create a Veterans Monument Park on the shore of Soldier Pond. The monument is to tribute those men and women who have given their time to serve in the United States Armed Forces. Although the official dedication of the monument will not occur until September 18th, this video shows the installation of the monument in the new park. The monument was purchased and is being delivered by Elias Monument located in Madison, Maine. Now this is the base of the stone itself. Jim Elias was once a basketball star at the University of Maine at Fort Kent. Completed his education there and went on into establishing Elias Monuments. Now his son has joined the company. Both of them installed monuments throughout the state of Maine. So this is the way the monument is going to look. Now it's standing up and it will be placed on the base.
just a matter of lining it up on the base itself. emblems of the different branches of the military are on the side the army the navy coast guard the merchant marines the Air Force, and the Marine Corps. The side of this monument on the part of New Canada, Wallgrass and Cross Lake that have gotten together to commemorate the veterans that have served in the different wars. They put spacers underneath the monument, at least for the moment, so they can take the straps on and off the stone itself. The monument is on a beautiful location here in Soldier Pond. As you can see, it overlooks Soldier Pond itself. The town, the bridge, the Fish River. Beautiful place for people to come and to enjoy not only the scenery, but the monument itself. And they'll tell us, tell us about how, how did you get started with all of this? This whole project. <laughs> I got started because uh, my cousin, who's the uh, chair of the Pond Fest group, uh, asked me at a basketball game uh, if I would be willing to uh, help out with getting a veterans memorial here in uh, Soldier Pond. And um, that was the beginning of it. That was in, uh, I think, 2020. And uh, from that particular point on, um, we organized with a group of uh, veterans. Uh, and uh, those veterans are uh, Norman Fournier, Jack Norris, Robert Bob Thibodeau, uh, John uh, Bouchard, George Pooler, Bert Hall Daigle, Dona Sear, Eldon Thibodeau, and myself. And um, as a result of this organization, uh, we met with uh, Gary Saussier, uh, dealing with uh, Elias Monuments. Of, we're very grateful to, to have something as nice as this. And um, from that point on, it was uh, because of COVID, wait and see, make a phone call, wait and see, um, and, and that just ballooned for everybody. So uh, eventually, uh, I started going around uh, very humbly 
asking for donations and the community throughout the area stepped to the plate and uh, my best estimate is that we accumulated over twenty five thousand uh, dollars and uh, to everybody uh, all of the veterans are eternally grateful uh, for that when it came to the site preparation uh, the riprap that you see all around this area was donated by Soderberg with the geotextile that is underneath. Uh, the uh, work was donated by uh, J.R. Boucher by placing the, the stones. Uh, S.W. Collins donated the pavers uh, that are beneath us so that we could lay out our footprint and um, uh, Ed Pelletier and Sons donated the, the capstone that we have here uh, finishing. Uh, people have stepped to the plate and donated all kinds of things uh, to assist us. So a uh, long story short, we had monthly meetings and uh, we'd go over our agenda, make phone calls, wait and see, and the process just continued until now. And, and I'm happy to say that uh, Jim Elias uh, finally put uh, uh, a capital letter on what everything uh, is taking place here. Uh, this is just beautiful, it, it's outstanding. Um, and uh, I just would like to let people know that our perimeter poles all have solar lights on them. Uh, the flagpole, when we install it, will have a solar light and uh, it's very, very nice at night. It's uh, really, um, it's breathtaking. Uh, when I was in the service, I was at uh, in Brooklyn, New York, at the uh, Verrazano Narrows Bridge, and to me that was Christmas every night. A two and a half mile bridge with lights all the time. It was just unbelievably beautiful. And that's what this park brings to me, is the memory. And uh, we now call it uh, the Veterans Park, even though we initiated, uh, started off as being Tri-Community Veterans Services for the town of Wallagrass, New Canada, and Cross Lake. And the selectmen uh, have been 100% behind us. The property was deeded from the state of Maine to the town of Wallagrass. And the only fund that we had to have there was to have a $2,500 closure fee to the state of Maine. So that was the, the beginning and the three towns uh, by a ratio of uh, a population donated that $2,500 at their town meetings. So that went a long ways and that was the beginning of our contributions and donations. The town of Wallagrass will maintain this site after uh, we are uh, I'm not going to say dissolved because we're never dissolved. Uh, Gary Sosi has told me that. Uh, there's always an ongoing process. So yeah, we'll be here to, to continue that effort and uh, help the town of Wallagrass, but they'll be maintaining the, the grounds and overseeing anything else that is taking place here. Are there any special events that are going to be held here each year? I should hope so, particularly Memorial Day. And uh, I'd like to say Veterans Day. We were going to wait till Veterans Day, but who's going to see the engraved pavers on, on Veterans Day up here? Uh, it's going to be snow covered, uh, you know? So uh, that's why we're choosing right now the uh, 18th of September. 2022 at one o'clock we are going to have our dedication ceremonies uh, right now uh, as far as the rough plans for uh, the dedication ceremony is an opening prayer with uh, uh, Father uh, Jim Labrie and then uh, we're going to have uh, the raising of the flag and uh, the national anthem sung by Marty Jarndro uh, we're going to have the American Legion in Fort Kent is going to sponsor a rifle squad uh, off the bridge. We'll have a gun salute. Uh, I'll open uh, some welcoming remarks. Uh, after those welcoming remarks, uh, we will um, uh, then uh, unveil the, the statue. And um, after that, uh, we're going to be... Uh, inviting anybody in the public to come to the ceremony and uh, we're going to have a social gathering uh place unknown right now it's either going to be at the snow sled club or at the community center at the wallagrass elementary school
Right now, what we have are blank pavers. We have roughly uh, 60 pavers or so available. So probably between now and even tomorrow morning, because this is Labor Day weekend, we'd like to put some pavers in because I know that there are people who are traveling and th they would like to come and see the pavers that they have bought. So we're going to hopefully install our pavers and also uh, install our uh, flagpole in back of us. And uh, we'll, uh, we'll take it from there. Uh, anybody who is interested in buying pavers, there are a lot of brochures around. I make sure that uh, a lot of the public uh, commercial stores have uh, some available. The town office is always willing to do that. And uh, everything that has been taken place here has been through the Wallagrass town office. So I commend uh, Lana was in uh, outstandingly for the effort that she has put in and uh, Jenny Hart at the, at the town office. They have helped us tremendously. So uh, to them, uh, we, we salute them. The, the monument is called the die. The top part of a monument is called the die and then you have the base at the bottom. This is, uh, this is a gray granite from Vermont. Gray granite is native to our area. Uh, the different colors of granite that you see in the cemetery uh, come from all over the world. They're native to different parts of the world. Uh, the blacks are uh, native to China and India and South Africa. And the reds are in Scandinavian countries and the pinks are from Canada. Um, but the black and the unpolished gray go together nicely because it really stands, makes the center part stand out a lot. So the, the monuments, they broke off the quarry in block form and then they're brought to a saw plant where they're sawn into different thicknesses. And then um, I buy uh, slabs and then cut the slab. Uh, I have a small manufacturing plant that uh, cuts the slabs into the shape that you see here. And, uh, and then we do the lettering at our shop uh, with CAD systems and uh, artwork. So uh, they're attached here, different colored granites. They're attached with stone epoxy which is very strong. One person ha uh, developed this formula and it's designed only for granite. Hmm. And so if you, uh, if you picture a large mausoleum that weighs somewhere around 75,000 pounds where you'd put full bodies in, uh, that's what holds the mausoleum together, the stone epoxy. And that too is from Vermont. So the chemist that put it together is from Vermont. Uh, so I'm confident, even driving over Route 11, <laughs> that uh, these were going to stay attached to the center die. <laughs> and they did. <laughs> so. Now, Jim, t tell us about Elias Monument itself. I mean, right now it's here, but, but there's a connection to Fort Kent and your connection to Fort Kent as well as uh, the connection to all of the monuments that are in this area. Uh, yeah, that's a long road. Uh, starting back when I was 18 as a freshman coming here because my brother came here uh, at the college and uh, he graduated from Fort Kent became a teacher and so I thought that sounded pretty good so I followed his footsteps and uh, from from uh, being here as a freshman till today I never dreamed that I'd be involved in putting in such you know a monument for for the community or that I would um, know so many people up here, I, I tell people that uh, in Madison, which is where I'm from, I say, well, I was born in Madison, but Fort Kent was my hometown. <laughs> so, because I spent so much time in, <laughs> in Fort mm -hmm. Kent. And all of the, uh, a lot of the people that I went to school with here are now in oh. different positions around town. Um, right. And, and so they're sort of running mm -hmm. the towns in the, in the area. And so, um, and so therein lies, the, you know, part of the reason, like Glen Lamar, I yeah. uh, was involved oh, in, wow. the, uh, in the America First Mile. Mm -hmm. uh, and he came down to my shop a number of times when we were putting that together. And, and, the, uh, and of course, Allagash, uh, everybody knows um, Stanley Pelletier, <laughs> right? Up in St. Francis. <laughs> Fran so he was involved in the, in the uh, St. Francis Monument that uh -huh. we put in. And, and, and then we did the uh, Veterans Memorial up in Allagash as well. So, and when you go to Madawaska, you go a little f 
grandfather down the road, and, and we were uh, we built a lot of the grand. Well, we built the big monument in the motorcycle park across from McDonald's. Yeah. So, and that one actually is blue pearl, uh, which is a unique color, which came from Sweden, Norway area. Huh. So, certainly, thank you both. I think from all the veterans. For all the people in this area, and I, I guess I speak for the veterans as well, and myself. Um, this is a great monument, and it's a great tribute, and the view here is spectacular. <laughs> Thank you. Yeah. All right. What goes on the side? Are they? Tell us about those. These are standard uh, military emblems, and. Um, Naturally, each one represents the branch of the service that mm -hmm. it says. And, uh, you know, basically just, there's a number of different ways to carve those on. And I kind of like this way. It makes them pop out a little bit more. Yeah, absolutely. Than just, you know, maybe the reverse of it. And that's an, those are options, but um, I just like doing it this way. And so they seem to, uh, they seem to look better to me this way and with black granite when you scratch black granite it gives it gives the illusion that it's white underneath the surface mm -hmm. uh, not this white because this, mm -hmm. this has got a special treatment on it um, but just the natural surface so if you scratch this like an etching you've probably seen etchings in the cemetery where people have black granite with a picture etched into it uh, they're basically just scratching it in the right places which makes the picture and um, which is kind of strange because if you looked at this unpolished, it doesn't look white at all. It just looks like kind of a dark gray. But if you just scratch this right here, it'll have a white line in it. And it pops right out at you. So you have to be careful with it, you know, with the oops, not to scratch it. But again, it's hard to scratch it too because it's, the polish on this is ground in. This isn't anything that's just painted on or baked on. This is, this is ground in with a series of different pads that closes the pores of the granite. And then in the end, there's a special powder that's put on, and that's ground on, and that brings the luster of the color out. That's why you can see stones that are 100 years old, and they still have a nice polish on them. Yeah. Is there yeah. any finish that goes on this? That's, that's it. That's the finish. Uh, and you won't, really don't have to do anything to this. Treat it like you would your countertop at home, you know, your granite yep. countertop. <laughs> And the outdoors here isn't going to hurt anything. This may discolor in time because birds have a tendency to land on yeah. it with fertilizer. <laughs> but uh, that br washes right off pretty easily with the yeah. with the pressure washer. Yeah. So yeah, I mean it, it, it's basically maintenance free for a, a lot of years.